Hi all, I see a lot of friendly and familiar faces in the audience, but in case you don't know, my name is Christina Huang and I'm Tony Huang's daughter. I probably seem recognizable from the brochures and the posters I see he put up so that you all notice me today and the Facebook posts over the years, but today I'm here to talk in person about my dad and my feelings on this next stage of his upcoming campaign and the election season on the horizon. After working in New York in finance for the past two years, I've embraced a firm, optimistic perspective. Every week has the chance to be better than the last, rather than being bogged down in the negativity and the chaos of living in the city. The commotion and the stress and the anxiety that living in New York brings is enough to make someone go crazy with the disquiet of it all, but instead I've begun to consistently turn to positivity. Experiencing this harsh political climate for the past two years that has, test, that has tested my optimism more than ever as a young woman in a male-oriented industry with a voice that needs to be heard. As I'm sure many other women in this crowd feel, I find myself challenged on a daily basis to grasp onto any glimpse of good news, happy stories, or pleasant distractions in the political sphere. I dare to find inspirations or role models or people I aspire to be in the national news and the social media. Like I said, the optimism is definitely being tested, but when I think about the work that my dad is doing every day up in Hartford and throughout this district, I brighten up and smile because I know through the rough and negative hurdles that he has to go through every day, he will smile through it and work harder than you know. And that's something to look at and strive for. Um, Mary Oliver has a quote that I love, and I've spent a lot of time like in my own life thinking about it, and she presents this open question, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? The importance of finding that one niche, that one place, or that one sweet spot that absorbs most of people's entire existence. <coughs> Unlike many people that might struggle spending their whole lives looking for what Mary Oliver is talking about, my dad has found it. Thank goodness the Fairfield School Districts attempted to redistrict me like four times So in elementary school, otherwise my dad would have never found an excuse to go down to that Board of Ed meeting and begin his political career. I can still hear his promises to my mom for only one more position, one more election season, which has turned from one term at a local RTM board to Connecticut State Senator. Once he started though, we all knew that he was going to be in it for the long haul. Bringing up my mom, I also want to say a belated Mother's Day to my mom, Grace and all the other moms out there who constantly support, nurture, and bring out the best in their families that they support and hold together. <coughs> I know that my dad wouldn't have all the success, support, and true impact in the community without this special woman by his side. No matter how much slack I give him about quick runs to ShopRite, becoming two hour long grocery trips with countless conversations in between, where I can't believe that all these people know him at the grocery stores. Yes. Um, I believe the support system that he has at home from my mom, brother, and I is one of the things fueling his passion to stay in politics. As many of you know, the Huangs are quite a Cornell University family with my parents meeting there in the 80s, I won't say exactly what year, and me following along and graduating two years ago. And finally to finish off the tradition, my younger brother Peter is now ending his freshman year there. The seed for civil and community service seems clear from the school that my dad spent four years at, the School of Industrial and Labor Relations. The ILR school's motto states that it is the leading college of the applied social sciences focusing on work, employment, and labor policy issues and practices of national and international significance. Their academic mission hopes to prepare leaders, inform national and international employment and labor policy, and improve working lives. In between playing a ridiculous amount of basketball across campus, the lectures my dad attended must have sparked his idealist perspective for local government and fostered his strength in articulating ideas within an inclusive and diverse academic environment. 
Our university on a hill prepared him for a future, decades later, dedicated to pr providing representation for all his constituents with an unbiased approach. Understanding that access to education for all, especially the most vulnerable constituents in the district, was something that was a clear campaign promise from the beginning, and it continues to drive his vision for a better Connecticut. If anyone watches my dad during session or any event across his district, they can see the passion there. It lies in his tone, his intensity, and his focus on getting the message across. Our former president, Barack Obama, vocalized that call to action when he said, changes will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for and we are the change that we seek. It's not enough to just watch Face the Nation or C-SPAN on the weekends and contemplate how you can make a difference. My dad has proven that actions speak louder than words. Actions must continue in Connecticut to make it better, and he is ready for the undertaking. His duty to civil service, as both Pat and Laura said, are more than just a nine to five job. It goes farther than the hundreds of houses he visits door to door on any given weekend. And clearly, I can vouch that being a state senator goes far beyond a 40 hour work week. Whether it be 1 a.m. returns to Fairfield after session debating, 7 a.m. parade float check-ins, or running all around the state to attend organization meetings or capital updates, that is a real commitment to community. His newly minted electric Chevy Bolt has its work cut out for it, trying to find working charger outlets across Connecticut as it traverses to Eagle Scout inductions, new business openings, senior center get-togethers, or my personal favorite that we already got to talk about, the inaugural St. Baldrick's fundraiser. It's not often that you can see your family hairdresser shave your dad's head on purpose, and for a fantastic cause, bringing attention to childhood cancer research. Thank goodness for iPhone photos and videos that let me feel like I was able to attend that one. More than ever, this state needs true and honest partnerships that choose to take the risk and experience the challenges that come with working across the aisle with your peers to make substantial transformations to Connecticut. A bipartisan attitude that allows our state government officials to cross borders and work together to create productive change is a lot to wish for. But I can promise you that my dad is up for the task and he has shown up time and time again to exceed our expectations and create a new definition and image for what it means to be part of the state assembly. I can't wait to walk beside him on this next campaign journey until November. And with that, I would like to introduce my dad, State Senator Tony Wong. Mm -hmm.